So BUN version 1.0 is out, finally stable release. In this mini video series we're going to play with this tool and see the differences and the ease of use that it provides compared to Node.js itself. So in the upcoming videos we'll also see how to dockerize a project in BUN plus a lot more so if you want to learn more stick with me. Hello what's up guys medium guy here and in this video we're going to have a look at the bun that has been recently had a stable release so we're going to see what it is and how to use it and maybe replace it in our upcoming javascript applications so right before i start this video also don't forget to watch other videos on my channel where you can find videos about other cool technologies so without any delay let's get down to work so as it is stated in the BUN website itself, on the documentation page, BUN is an all-in-one toolkit for JavaScript and TypeScript applications and it ships as a single executable file called BUN. So the cool thing about this is that BUN has tried to follow the path of Node.js itself, like for example in the syntax of its commands and installation of new packages and running things and making scripts, which we're going to see shortly in this video. So what BUN provides is that it is a runtime for JavaScript applications, it is a package manager also, it is able to run tests in a JavaScript application, it is a transpiler for TypeScript, and we can do almost everything that we can do with the Node.js itself, like for example creating HTTP web servers or creating WebSocket applications and quite everything that we could do formerly with Node.js itself. So in the installation page, we've got many methods that we can install BUN. So we have the curl command method, npm method, which installs BUN as an npm package, of course globally, with homebrew and proto, and the one that we'll see in this video is by using docker. So in order to download the BUN official image, I'm going to copy paste this command in my terminal. So by passing the 1.0 as the tag, I'll actually define the docker to pull the 1.0 version of BUN. So I'll hit Ctrl C because I have already downloaded the image. So right now the thing that I want to do is to create a container and map a directory from my host machine to inside the container. Also forwarding a port to inside the container. So after I create a web server with BUN, I'll be able to access that server from the outside network. So I'll say docker run dash dash rm to remove the container after my job is done dash d to run it in detached mode and dash v dollar pwd slash app to slash home slash bun slash app inside the container and of course dash p at at map to at at inside the container then i'll specify my image with its tag name and at the end i'll provide a sleep command which will actually keep the container up and running before the sleep time has ended so if i hit enter it'll just create a container for me using the bun official image and if i hit ls you can see that a app directory has been created over here and it is mapped to inside the container on this path. So that will be my working directory. And as a result, whatever file that I create inside the container will be also available in this directory in my host machine. So I'll put all these files and configurations and everything in my GitHub repository in the docrise slash bun, for which you can find the link in the description section down below. So if I say docker ps a, I can see the containers that are running in my machine. So as we can see over here, I've got the bun container running successfully with this name. So if I say docker exec dash it, and I'll pass the name of the container and a bash at the end. So as a result, I am inside the container with a bash session. So as you can see, I am in the slash home bun app directory by default inside the container and if I hit ls there is nothing over here. So moving to the documentations, 
on the quick start page we can see that by running the bun init we can create a simple default project so i'm going to move to the terminal hit bun init and it is going to ask for some questions i'll hit enter for all the questions and if i hit ls right now you can see that a default project files has been created successfully with the tsconfig json over here which is enabled by default in the bun init command so right now you can see that I've got an index.ts file over here. So if I move to the VS code and open this directory, you can see that in the index.ts file, there is a very simple console log command. So the way that I can run this with bun, so I'll move back to the terminal and say bun run index.ts. And you can see that it executes the JavaScript or if it was TypeScript, it'll also execute it and return the result by running this command. So we can also say bun index.ts and we'll get exactly the same result. So moving back to the documentations, over here we've got the very basic sample of creating a web server with bun. So I'm going to copy paste this to the index.ts file that we have over here. So I'll paste it over here. And if I want to save this, I get a permission error. If I move to the terminal, I'll hit ls-la. You can see that the root user is the owner of all the files that has been created. So I'll say chmod-r777d slash app directory inside the container so as a result it'll actually affect the files that are mapped to my local machine and i'll be able to change the files with my own user so this step is not required if you have installed it on your host machine directly and not running it through docker so if i move back to the vs code over here if i hit save now I can save it successfully and I'm just going to change this 3000 port to 8080 because this is the port that I've mapped to outside the container and if it runs on the 3000 port I won't be able to access it from the outside network. So basically what this does is it creates a bun.serve with this configuration over here so basically we define the port to be 8080 and a fetch method that accepts a request as input and it can return responses based on our use cases and lastly over here i've got a console log which logs out the url and the server's port to the output so we'll be able to see it when we run this file so if i move back to the terminal and i'll say bun index.ts you can see that I get the exact same log to the output. So basically right now, if I go to the browser on the localhost port 8080, I should be able to see the bun text as the result. So I'll hit localhost 8080. And as you can see, I get the bun as the output. So moving back to the documentations, over here we can see how to create our own scripts in the package.json file. So basically this is exactly the same as the default Node.js application. So if I move to the package.json file over here, I'll try to add a scripts section and over here I'll say dev and I'll give the bun index.ts as the value. I'll save this and if I move to the terminal, I'll hit control C and say bun run dev and you can see that it tries to exactly run the same command that are passed in the package.json file on the script section. So for the development environments, as we try to use the Node.bun package for Node.js applications to get a hot reloading for every changes that we make in the project files. So by default, bun has this feature out of the box and does not require to install any specific packages. So in order to achieve this, I'll move to the package.json file. And over here, if I say dash dash watch, I'll hit save. And right before I kill my server, I'm just going to test that the hot reloading is not working right now. So like for example, I'll try to add some exclamation marks over here and if i hit save i'll go back to the browser and if i refresh you can see that it is still responds with the previous response so 
I'll try to kill this server and if I run this again you can see that dash dash watch option is added to the command over here so right now if I go back over here and change this to hello bun I'll hit save and go back to the browser hit refresh you can see that it automatically detects the file changes and reloads the server without needing to kill that server and run it again. So lastly for this video I'm going to install a package and see how it goes. So I'll move to the terminal, I'll hit ctrl c to stop this server and if I say bum install axios which is a package for making requests that we use a lot in our projects so I'll hit enter and you can see that it installs it right away so if I go to the VS code over here on the package.json file you can see that a dependency has been successfully added which is the Axios that we just installed right now so I'll end this video over here and continue the rest in the next video we're going to see how to make a complicated web server with many paths and lately we're going to see how to dockerize it and create a docker file and lastly create a docker image out of this project of course based on the bun official image so don't forget to watch the next episodes so that's all for this video and I hope you learned something new in this one. Actually Bon is very appealing to me and I might actually migrate my projects or at least I'll try to use Bon in my new projects to give it a test in a real project and see how it goes. So if you have any questions or any recommendations of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below and if you like the content don't forget to like and subscribe to help grow the channel and motivate me to create more free contents like this. So with that I hope to see you in the next video.